evening, everybody. My name is David Monias. I'm your coach. I'm your host today, and I'm going to introduce as well as our co-host, Karen Swain. And uh, today we also have a special guest host, Cora Morgan. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Cora Morgan, and I work here at the First Nations Family Advocate Office. I've been able to tune in a couple of times, and I'm really pleased to be able to join you all tonight and share one of my favorite recipes. So good evening, everyone, and, and I'm happy to see you all here. Miigwech. Awesome. And I will give it off to Karen for some of our opening formalities. Hi, everybody. Week seven. Welcome. So happy to join you all again. And thank you so much to Cora for coming and sharing this really um, delicious recipe. I was fortunate enough to have it um, when she entered a chili cook-off a few years back. So I'm looking forward to getting the secrets. Um, welcome to Food is Medicine. We just wanna give you a heads up that we've had a smudge already to help us to cook in a good way and build this nice community time. Also, I want to remind you that uh, Food is Medicine is being recorded. It will be edited and posted to our YouTube channel. So if anyone who is unable to join us here as we're cooking live, will be able to make this wonderful recipe later on. Um, I'll let you know that uh, should a child show up in the camera, when it's edited, there'll be a nice little happy face emoji over the child's face and that's to protect their privacy in that good way. So back to David and Cora and welcome everyone. Awesome, awesome. And right before we get right into it, uh, I have two things for us. Uh, one thing is, is, as you can see, we have two people in the office here. Uh, so I won't, I will be masked. And just through some technical difficulties, um, you may or may not be able to hear me well. If that's the case, uh, do let us know or let Karen know and she'll kindly let us uh, know to speak up or repeat anything and just keep that in mind. Also, uh, we always like to start things off with the land acknowledgement that we're uh, in Treaty One territory, uh, home of the Cree, Anishinaabe and Ojibwe. And yeah, and I'd love for us to get started. Take it away. Thank you very much. Okay, good evening, everyone. Tonight we're making chili and um, it's a recipe, recipe that I've kind of changed over time and um, we have several different ingredients. Some of them sound kind of maybe a bit unorthodox, but hopefully once we, we do things um, in the proportions, um, you can always you know adjust later on. So um, for now, we provided those instructions and I'm going to share with you each time we um, add some something and the quantity that we're gonna add. Um, one of the first things that I usually start with is um, sweating out our, our vegetables. So um, right now we're going to um, add our onions and green peppers to the fry pan. So we're gonna preheat the fry pan. And I usually cook them over about a medium heat and it takes only about three minutes to be able to do that. And I put like just about two tablespoons of oil in there just so that you know you're not having really greasy vegetables to add to your chili. Mm -hmm. David was so kind that he pre-chopped for for our preparation tonight and I know that um, you guys may need a bit of extra time to to do your chopping and get started so um, maybe as you're you're chopping um, Karen might have something to share with us. Mm -hmm. And that's for sure. And I can also add some more, we, unless you think that's a great a great amount there. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> if you want, I can add some more too. We, I did only end up using kind of half of it right now. And I only also used about like three quarters of our onions, uh, depending on how much you need, it won't be too much. Yeah, and of course, the smaller you chop them, the faster they'll cook, so. Mm -hmm. That's a handy little thing to keep in mind and keeping everything kind of the same size so that it cooks evenly. Yes, of course. Of course, of course, of course. So we're gonna have that cooking. Um, just okay, just Oh, it's smaller. Yeah. 
Let's charge it out nicely. And if anybody needs any help with cutting or how to be safe night handling skills, I do have some leftovers here in case you guys want to see that. It's up to you. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat too. So if you have any questions there that you, uh, you know, if you want to just ask in there, I'm happy to go in there and help answer. It's Jen, by the way. <laughs> awesome. We have a moder another moderator. Oh, that's great. It's a real team effort tonight. So that's really great. Um, you know, sometimes the onions can be optional. I know a lot of times there's, uh, there's a lot of people that don't like onions. There's lots of allergies to onions. Um, and I just noticed now that David um, also chopped up the garlic. And so I'm going to add that in about a minute or two, because it's really tiny and it's not going to cook as It'll cook a lot faster than the onions and the green peppers. So maybe at about two minutes in, I'll just um, throw those in too. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to just hijack this here too. So again, I'm going to go over to the overhead. Sometimes we do have those little sprouts. They are practically edible. And I mentioned this before in other classes too. I like to cut around them. Uh, if they're kind of sprouting up quite a bit to the point that you can kind of see it like going like a couple inches away from it. Maybe we don't wanna, wouldn't wanna use it. Uh, if the sprouts are there, they do kind of take away some of the flavor, um, but they're still still edible and they're still great. Yeah. Just in case anybody's ever worried about storing them. Yeah. And really like for me, um, I used to always just use garlic powder or gar garlic salt. For whatever reason, I just didn't really realize how affordable it is to buy fresh garlic and how easy it is and how much um, it really does make a difference to have it fresh. And I think what's really important is that, you know, like an onion, you peel all the outer layer off and then um, you chop it as kind of finely as you can. I know in movies, like mobster movies and stuff <laughs> like that, they'll use like a little razor blade. I don't do that. I just use a little paring knife. So. Um, but it's good to chop it up really small so that you just get kind of little bits of hints of garlic as you're cooking. Or I want to do it the mobster way. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing too is that I've also in the past um, have peeled them, right? And I've also kind of just got like, I don't know if you guys ever had those yard, larger uh, yogurt container, but I just peeled them together and it kind of helps slow that, uh, that crowding process kind of and it kind of just keeps them separate and you can throw them in the fridge and it kind of almost like slows that process down and it kind of keeps them fresh but also kind of like keeps them the longevity happening and then we're going to be switching to our overhead camera here in our on our stove here just a heads up so while core is giving that a stir and Covering it up, I just want to remind you that we're coming out of we're coming back into our spring season. So of course, with spring, it's a new beginning, a fresh start, and we have that beautiful growth happening. Even though there was a little bit of snow last night, <laughs> that last um, little bit of a, a winter kick, and you know, it helps to remind us how thankful we are for uh, the warm weather coming for the green grass and, and the rain that'll bring those flowers soon. So again, a reminder of our spring teachings from, from last week. And I really love these hearty family recipes that uh, remind us of community gatherings and, and eating with our relatives. Uh, because lately with the COVID, we haven't really had those opportunities to do that. Um, I know that there have been some, some of us who've been making those big batches and then going out and, and sharing them with, with people that need that um, help with, with food. So I, I'm really grateful to hear that uh, community is stepping up to support our people that face those challenges. And again, I'm really glad everybody joined us today. Ooh, it's looking lovely. And we're just going to let those cook a little bit longer. Yeah. One of the things that, about chili is that often if I'm going to any kind of potluck or ceremony, I my usually go, my go-to is chili because I feel like I do a good job at it. Um, 
but it's also fairly affordable. Like a lot of times um, if I'm at the grocery store and, you know, almost every second week, there's usually deals on ground beef. So it's something that you can easily freeze and section out packages and it's really affordable. And you can really stretch your dollar and feed a lot of people with chili, plus it's delicious. And so, um, you know, often I, I'll pay attention when I'm in the grocery store and when diced tomatoes are on sale, um, often you can get them for like 88 cents a can or 99 cents a can. And so I'll pick up a few cans of them so that I always have a few on hand because they're just handy. Like even if one of the things that when I was a kid, we used to eat often was macaroni and diced tomatoes or canned tomatoes. And, you know, those are really good staples. They're hearty and they can fill you up and you can make them for, for you can make so much for, for so little. So that's really exciting. Um, also with all this chili, you know, the main ingredients are the ground beef and those diced tomatoes. And, you know, we've included a few other things, but, you know, a lot of times once you have, like we provided that cayenne pepper, that big a cayenne pepper will last like 10 years because you really don't want to use much of it. And same with the ground cumin, it's a really potent. So we always use kind of smaller amounts. But once you have those in your pantry, if you want to go and make chili, then it's really quite easy is getting that the ground beef and the tomatoes. And, um, you know, when I, when I bring this to, you know, any kind of ceremony, of course, I'd be preparing it with a skirt on and, and not sampling it as I'm, I'm preparing it. But today we're doing it just for, for the fun of it. So no skirt for me today, but typically when I'm making chili, chili, I have it on. And I'm gonna just add the garlic now because um, the others have been sweating it out for a little bit. And I did end up putting the lid on the pan just so that it would cook a little bit faster. And while she's doing that, one thing I, she brought up that was actually really smart was the fact that you could portion them. Um, I like to think that, uh, especially when we're, um, uh, Trying to think about healthy food, like how to prepare food for the week, whether that be for yourself, for children, for lunch. And sometimes we like, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a guilty for this, where I tend to kind of go out for fast food, <laughs> especially when we're working in the office. Uh, I like to uh, meal prep, and that's a big part of it too. It's just kind of cooking large amounts and then freezing it and just like having enough for the week. And that could be your lunches. If you really wanted to, you can go the extra mile and make your suppers as well. But yeah, and with that said, we're just about adding the ground beef here. And again, this is easy stuff about ground beef. You just want to be uh, mushing it up, kind of making it smaller as you go and just constantly turning it. And those flavors from like the peppers, the onions, and even that garlic is just going to soak up right into that, uh, the ground beef there. I'm sure all of you guys can already smell it. It smells so good. <laughs> I see there's a few families that are cooking along with us. So that's awesome. And I, I love um, the hamburger recipes as Cora mentioned that there's so uh, much of a variety that we can utilize. And this chili can be used um, on top of fry bread. It can be used uh, even... Um, on hamburger buns like sloppy joes with cheese or you know you can add more vegetables and more beans you could even add corn my grandma used to put corn in in her chili yeah. so like it has so many different options and so many variations that we can use we could even use um ground chicken or ground turkey mm, chili fries that's so true Oh well, yeah. That was, was Jasmine that said that was a great one. <laughs> oh yeah. And you know it is handy, like even for my kids' birthdays. A lot of times like we have grandparents and aunts and uncles coming too, and you have more people in your household. So like it's so easy to have a pot of chili out. People can eat that alone. But if you're serving hot dogs, you can just quickly add a spoonful of that to it as well. And like David said, it freezes really well so that if you want to portion it out, usually when I make chili, I just eat it for three days. So that's, 
And if it tastes good, then you're, you're okay to do that. <laughs> exactly. I like that one. The way my mom makes the, like the Indian tacos is by cooking the bannock and then she just makes chili to put on top and it's, yeah, it's so yummy. We just add some like cheese and lettuce and tomatoes on top and salsa or sour cream. It's really good. No, and you know, my dad used to like adding egg noodles to his, so that made it even more kind of heavy and filling. Um, but you know, sometimes people will add cheese on top or sour cream or tortilla chips. So wow, a lot of that. wow, that looks great. And so usually when I've got my ground beef going, I take that as an opportunity to start opening the cans because all of that is going to go in the pot. So right now we can start opening the, the cans while the ground beef's on the stove. So we got our diced tomatoes here. Pardon the are, you, are you doing the ground beef in the in the big pot or the or the pan? I'm doing the ground beef in the pan. Okay. And then getting the canned. Um, ingredients ready to go in the pot and once the meat is cooked then I'm gonna when I'm going to uh, I, I can get the stove started and putting the canned things in there and get them heating up for when the the ground beef is completely cooked and then Ooh. add it to the the canned ingredients nice. Sounds Sometimes good. Okay. If I'm kind of lazy at home I will brown my ground beef and and cook my onions all in the same pot and once it's done then I'll just transfer it over. And then I have Hi. one less pan to wash after. Yeah, but that's good. Today because we have less time, it's easier to get your canned things on and heating and then add your cooked ground beef after. Nice. And me, like I like my, my ground beef super cooked, super well done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah. And you know, with mushrooms, like when you add the can, one of the things my dad used to always do um, is just put the whole can in, even with the juice. The only thing that I don't put the juice in is the beans, because sometimes it's got a kind of a weird consistency in there. So usually I'll drain all the juice out of that can of beans. And sometimes I'll add a, a can of brown beans as well but today we're we're doing the six bean blend and i i don't know which way is which but i'm going to so. <laughs> good job either way yeah, i'm a big fan of the black bean but whenever i make kind of any uh, like chili or anything like that it's always in there and then like i always like stocking my pantry with a lot of cat food um just like i'm sure people are pros at this already but like i always thought um a good way to save money and get a good bang for your buck for like food wise is always just to kind of um fill your pantry first before your fridge because <laughs> the fridge stuff and kind of you cycle through it sometimes you buy it in like two week bursts uh depending on how much you're eating or how many people you have in the household and then just that having that pantry full of canned foods is really good too I mean, it's always good to have fresh. One of the things that I found was that I was wasting some of the stuff in my fridge. And so now sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a list of what I have on the fridge on the outside. Like if I have broccoli in there, because sometimes when you put things in the drawer, you forget about it. And by the time you discover it, it's no good anymore. <laughs> so I put a, a magnet and a list of what's in my fridge. And then sometimes that informs the meals I'm going to prepare for the week. Let's go drain that. That's a very good idea. I need to do that. I, <laughs> I'm super guilty for having like some older like lettuce in there. <laughs> well, like, Cora is, well, Cora is draining the beans. Uh, a trick that I do with the bean blend is I will give it a little bit of a cold water rinse. And I don't know if this really works, but I find that it might reduce the, um, the musicalness of the beans if you catch my drift. <laughs> a good tip. <laughs> I rinse them too. It's kind of a, a thicker sort of weird consistency juice in there. A little bit bubbly. Yeah. So sometimes you can rinse them too. If you have a colander, maybe that's something great time to do that. Uh, in some cases, I might even just kind of put it in a glass pot here and use my hands. 
So obviously we're going to make sure we wash our hands before that. <laughs> because realistically, once they're washed, they're, they're quite clean. Do you want me to rinse those uh, beans for you? I rinsed them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Lovely. And I got the tomato paste up in here for you too later on. So that'll be for later. I'm just going to open them now. Oh, we have some time. One thing that I, I used to do too a lot was that if I was eating chili and I didn't have like chips or something and I had bread laying around, like especially bread ends, I would just like toast them and then put a little bit of margarine or butter and just a little bit of like, if I used garlic in the recipe, I just saved a little bit of that for the butter and then I just made a little bit of garlic toast. And I found out that was really yummy. <laughs> it's almost kind of like a bruschetta, right? Yeah. I always eat mine with toast. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the, the ground beef that all of you received was fairly lean ground beef. Um, ours is almost cooked. When it's almost near cooked, that's when I take out some of that grease in the in the pan. So I'm going to just do that quickly right now. Um, it's fairly lean, so there's not much of it, but you want to make sure that you get whatever grease you can out. Uh, I got a question. Um, oh, Peter. I, I finished my pin and everything. That's what it looks like. Oh, so it all wow. mixed together. Looks great. Looks good, man. How does it get to like, uh, that liquid texture? To, like, how do I get that to it? Like, it doesn't look like it has any liquid in it or whatever. All the liquid texture? Yeah. Uh, right now, ours is kind of looking the same, right? Um, sometimes uh, uh, a lot of the canned tomatoes and a lot of those materials uh, tend to kind of give it that liquidy, almost like soup uh, like texture. Uh, and usually once that kind of stuff gets going a little bit, it'll be a little bit more like soupy. But <laughs> um, yeah, just follow along and hopefully trust the process and It'll look great along soon. Yeah, once once your it starts warming up and cooking out, the the canned tomatoes will get more liquidy. It's almost kind of like they'll get like they kind of like soften and almost add everything. To it. And if you include the juice from the mushroom can, that also adds liquid to the to the soup as well or to the chili as well. Do you want a larger scoop? Well, I think I'm pretty good here. Okay. Was that helpful, Peter? Do you have any more questions? We're good? Awesome. Thanks for asking, Peter. Ooh, that's looking mighty yummy. Hi, Jasmine. Oh, you disappeared. I thought I saw something there. <laughs> How's it coming along? Our ground beef is almost done now. So I'm going to add the salt and pepper. One of the things that I saw in a cooking show a long time ago is that you wait for your ground beef to almost be done cooking before you season it, because if you season it too soon, then that grease will just take all of your seasonings away when you drain it. Wow, I didn't know that, thank you. <laughs> Teaching me so much today. And we're just gonna add a good amount to your flavor and your, your to taste. I love that people are cooking with together with partners, family members. It's so great. Hi. Hi. How's it going over there? Good. Um, I got my beans. Yum. Mine. And then there's my kids playing. Oh, oh nice. Great. Yeah. My mom has been helping me. Excellent. Awesome. Yes. Doing good. 
Okay. Hi, Melissa. Hi. How's it going over there? <laughs> hey. Oh, I think she's um, here's my daughter, Siobhan. Melissa. I think she's frozen. Oh, she's frozen. I'm not doing oh, there she is. Research. I think she was frozen. Yeah, yeah she is. Uh... I'm frozen. I love your kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I'm adding the um, canned goods to the pot now. Mm -hmm. Nathan, Dad's calling you. And for those who didn't hear, we're going to add the canned goods once more. <laughs> You have them all ready. And I'm putting it on kind of a bit of a medium high heat. And I'm, um, our ground beef is pretty much done. I'm leaving it on the element for now. And then I'm adding the canned goods um, right now. And um, except for the tomato paste, I'm gonna leave that for a little bit. Uh, I don't normally use lots of tomato paste cause it's super, super tomatoey. And it depends, I guess on your own taste, but usually I, I wait and I just put two to three tablespoons of it so that it's not too, um, it doesn't overpower the whole chili pot. Wow. <laughs> okay. Everything smells so great. I'm happy to see everybody working so hard and cooking. You know, all these weeks um, that I've been cooking here solo, <laughs> And having being behind for almost on some of the families here who had like two to four members cooking, uh, I feel I feel privileged today. <laughs> uh, be like on schedule and on time and everything like that. It's just it's so funny. <laughs> That's awesome. I was just gonna say too, if you if you don't end up using all your tomato paste, you can um, just transfer it into like a small Tupperware to save in your fridge to use, and it should last for a little bit too. And you can put it in the freezer too. That's what Joel said. <laughs> <laughs> No, and, and again, tomato paste, sometimes it can go on sale for like 70 cents a can. So when it's that price, I'll always pick up a couple because you can use it for lots of different things like stew and, and chili and different soups and stuff. So yeah, and, and like as well as like even just your, if you're making homemade spaghetti too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes when I make spaghetti, uh, especially with the pre-made Classico cans, it tends to be a little bit more liquidy and sometimes just that little bit of tomato paste just kind of thickens it up and makes it just right. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of times I'll add a can of brown beans. Um, and if I have like lots of people coming over, then I'll put in um, two cans of canned tomatoes and then it, it, feeds a couple more people that way. So today we just provided the one can, but if you had an extra can at home that you wanted to throw in, or maybe just for next time, that's another thing that could be done. Things are going good. So we got all the canned goods into our pot and because our ground beef is cooked now, I'm gonna add that right now as well. Awesome. It's looking so lovely. I wish we could get a nice close up of that. <laughs> Maybe one day <laughs> we'll work on getting that like that perfect kind of stuff going. Maybe we'll get our cameraman to get a handy cam that it can kind of just go slowly or not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, if you didn't hear that, um, <laughs> my cameraman said I should get a ghost over my head. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> Does it any, uh, this is a I like that. It's just make it. okay. um, I didn't have any cayenne pepper with mine. Dude, it was big, so I'm not gonna add it. You don't have any? It didn't come. No, with I didn't have any. there was none in the bag. What was in the bag? Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it, does make, make it, it does make it like it give it heat, but you can also still just add a little bit of extra chili powder. Mm -hmm. just you can add a bit of extra chili pepper and add a little bit of extra pepper pepper. 
Okay. Yeah. So we're talking like this stuff here. Yeah. Like we suggested like half a cup or half a teaspoon, not half a cup, <laughs> half a teaspoon of, of pepper. And maybe you just put in like three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper. And then, you know, when you taste it, if you like it a little bit more spicy, then you might add a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The other thing that will add a little bit of a kick to it is a cumin. But you got to be careful and sample it first because it's it's very strong too. But that will add more flavor that you can compensate for the, the cayenne. When we use the cayenne, we're just going to use like the tiniest a bit because it, it is very, very powerful. And you don't want to put too much in because you could easily ruin your whole, whole pot of chili. And but I did put a hint on the on the instructions or recipe that if if you make it too spicy, then you just add more brown sugar. Oh, I never knew that. That's yeah, great. it kind of compensates. I've made things like too spicy, and it's fine for me. But sometimes when you're ser serving people, that there's a lot of people that don't really appreciate the spice. So then you, I would just add another can of beans or another can of crushed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I know for one, I, I, I really like spice. <laughs> if I was cooking at home today, I'd be kind of just laying it in the cayenne pepper. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> well, and sometimes I'll buy a, a, a fresh jalapeno at the grocery store and I'll add that in there as well. Mm. Um, but today we had the cayenne for, for, because it's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And we always want to make sure things are being accessible and mm -hmm. um, like just flavors are just being kind of mindful because I'm not sure if everybody has like this. Oh, and here you can see our brown sugar. We're going to put the brown sugar in now so that it has time to kind of melt into our, our chili pot, our chili. And um, you all got a big, and I, I usually use like half a cup and it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Oh, it is. But it, it's good. Here you go. Here's a half cup. Me, I usually eyeball things. So today we're using um, actual measuring devices. But once you do things enough times, then you just you just do it. Kind of how I am with like panic at this point. <laughs> I remember at first I was like, uh, uh, I was just getting like bombarded by all the grandmothers that I used to work with and they're just like you're cooking it wrong and they're just like giving me heck but like after a certain point and hopefully once you kind of get familiar with a lot of these recipes it'll just be easy peasy for all you and it's looking pretty good already looking very hearty yeah I'll just bring it over here so you can see how it looks so far Ooh, so, so it's lovely. looking nice we still have more to add, so. And we have some um, like kind of cork boards and kind of like all these little things here. So if you ever want to just plop it on down there, if yeah. it's too hot, feel free to use this. So it doesn't run the table. <laughs> so now I'm going to add the tomato paste and I'm just going to get a tablespoon. Well, I got a teaspoon, so I'll just use three teaspoons of, of the tomato paste. And that's gonna make your chili a little more dark red. I will get a container for that. Watch me walk in front of the camera. <laughs> so professional. And something I can just do, I don't know if you guys ever do this at home too. Uh, I, I tend to just kind of put things like this. <laughs> if you don't have any type of spare container, this is a great way to do it. Especially with something thicker, kind of like um, tomato paste. And I'll bring it over to the overhead here real quick. So you can just put it in there and then have it stand up properly. This way you don't get no spillage, but you still get that seal. And that'll be just great for the, the fridge here. I'll put that right in there. And hopefully I can add that to another recipe sometime soon. And just if um, if your chili is really thick, keep the lid on so that way you don't evaporate any of that liquid in there. If you really wanted to, you could put like a, you know, a, 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 like maybe a quarter cup of water just to 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 make it um, a little more loose. 
but if you're going to put a little bit of water in there, then I put a little bit more of tomato paste just so you're not diluting your flavor. Great tips. So you got um, cinnamon in your package. Um, and it seems weird to put cinnamon in. But what you're going to do is you're just going to take like a pinch of it. And so I'm taking a fairly big pinch. It's not even half a teaspoon. But um, that's all I put in there because um, you don't want it to taste like cinnamon toast or anything like that. <laughs> now, I'm just opening these spices just to kind of get them going, and I'm just like getting that loft of nice spice. It smells so great. Mm. And with the cumin, it's going to be almost the same as the, um, sorry, almost the same as the cinnamon. I'm going to take a pinch, which is almost like the tip of your um, teaspoon. So it's about that much. And I just do a bit at a time because um, once you sample it, you might want to add more. Oh, yours looks good. good. Tomato paste, mom? Uh, not yet. Oh, that looks so good. Looks great. If I'm doing this at home with my kids, I let them mess around and try and open the cans until I get impatient and then do it for them. But they'll go through the motions of trying. And when I'm doing it with them at home, what I do is I, I don't oh, heat up the pot. I leave the pot on the table and I just pour all the cans into it. And then we measure out the ingredients into the palm of their hands so that they can add it. Their attention span is fairly short most of the time. So they'll do it for like 10 minutes and then they're done. And then they take the credit once it's over. <laughs> but it's still pretty great because it allows for um, just kind of that like easy peasy uh, kitchen work skills. Yeah. So we got the cayenne here. Again, this one is really, really strong. Um, I'm going to put a pinch in it, have it in. A little bit goes a long way. This is actually quite a bit. I might not even put all of this in there. Or I might because um, David likes it spicy. So I'll start with this and put that in. If I ever put too much cayenne, I just add a bit more brown sugar. So, mm -hmm. And be careful, wash your hands after this because if you get it in your eye, it's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there a few times. Just cooking like, uh, like jalapeno peppers and cutting them. <laughs> it's not a great feeling. Like I'm just gonna check in with Karen. How, how are things over there? Do you have anything? Just wanted to offer you a space of cheek if you wanted to. It's not mandatory, I'm, but. <laughs> I'm really enjoying <laughs> now. Of our co -host here. I'm really enjoying um, watching everything come together. Maybe we could do a, a little update with with the families that we haven't checked in with. We have um, 15 minutes left. Awesome, we're making great time then. It's a good thing I pre-cut her. Let's see who we can check in with today. Um, so there's Brittany. Yeah. Looks delicious, Hi. how's it going? It's going crazy. It's just me, baby. Oh, <laughs> me and my baby, my partner. Nice. Yeah. Family time. So, I Looks good. Behind, I think. I got it caught up. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Yeah. They had some like yellow and red. Um. We're doing good. I just didn't add the mushrooms just because the boys don't like them, but 
It oh, smells cool. really good. Smell, That's smells good. Really good. Looks Let's great. Your family's taste for Very cool. There's Jordan and Kyle. How's it going? It's going good. We're just waiting oh, for wow. it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, good. The tomato, the tomato, the tomato and the, the can of tomatoes will read that crazy miss out. Sorry, yeah. who's who's talking? Uh I think it's one of the families that we I think we are one of our moderators kind of muted them. So if they need oh. to chat again, they'll they'll let us know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So thanks, Jordan. There's uh, Melissa's kitchen. How are you doing, Melissa? Good, Karen. I think we're it's cooking. Awesome. 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 Ooh, yum! That looks delicious. Mm -hmm. I forgot my big pot at work, so I have to use my big frying pan. <laughs> hey, it's working. It's not working. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Peter Power. Okay, how about, oh, there's Tamara. Hi, how's it going? Hi. You're on mute, Tamara. It's going very well. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's going really good. It smells like super fantastic. And here is our chili. Wow. Yum. <laughs> Yum. Delicious. Coming along so well. Thank you. Hi, Pam. Hi, Pamela. Hi, it's Pam. Family time. Good, Good. 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 How are you? Right on. Make sure you I send us your pictures. Week. Actually, like we will. I say this every week, but like it just warms my heart seeing like families cooking together and spending a lot of time. I know, um, I know, I'm a culprit for it too, where I just spend a lot of time in my room or on the computer or on my phone. And then I've been like, at least in the New Year's, I've been trying to have me and my roommates or even my family just eat all together at the same time and be a part of that cooking process. So I'm glad to see it's happening at least. At least once a week with you guys. It's, it's really lovely to see. Again, it warms my heart. And then for those that didn't see, we just, just added about, was it this one? Chili powder? I added about a quarter um, or a half of chili powder. So for those who don't know, that's quite a bit. Hello. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have a question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's this. Oh, no, not half a cup, a quarter of a cup. A quarter of a cup. Oh, so right here. I have a question. It's a, the quarter cup, right? So you're going to be using a good amount of this, and you're just going to stir it on in. And then hopefully you'll have enough. It should. But uh, it's a great time to add it in now if you have more. Someone, so someone has a someone question. Someone had a question. Who is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, for the. the how did chili taste like more of a brown sh brown sugar taste? How do we take that flavor out away? You don't like the brown sugar flavor? No, like I want more of the chili flavor, not the brown sugar flavor. Is that what it is? Did you add your chili like, powder? More of a chili, no, not a chili, like a brown sugar flavor. More of the brown sugar is coming out. Like I don't taste the other spice. The brown sugar is overpowering the other spices. Did you put all of the other spices in already? Yes. Okay. Um, well, if you, yeah, if you want to put a little bit more, um, if you don't mind it a little bit spicy, you could add a, a little bit more cayenne pepper or you could add another tablespoon of the chili powder and that will kind of counteract Usually I, I put less um, brown sugar than I normally do. And also oh. when you add the cilantro, it also changed the flavor. Mm -hmm. Can I imagine if uh, if you're okay. kind of hard a little bit deeper, if you happen to have a lot of that, um, that brown sugar in there, 
I think you can also probably use some of that uh, tomato paste. Again, while it might kind of bring more of a tomatoey flavor forward, it might just kind of balance that a little bit better for you. Yeah. And I don't know if you've chopped your cilantro yet, but um, David has chopped ours already. Uh, I usually put that in last, but if I'm gonna chop cilantro, what I do is I roll it up like this between my hands. That makes it kind of more tight. And then I use my knife so that I can get it into tinier little pieces. Great technique. The other thing that you can do is because the cilantro comes on stems, if you have your cheese grater, you can fish the little end through your cheese grater and it pulls all the leaves off. But our final ingredient is the cilantro and that's what, it changes the, the flavor quite a bit. You don't have to put tons in. You might wanna, um, we suggested a third of a cup, but if you wanna just test it out and put a little bit less in for now and then, it, and then add more if you like. I like the taste of it, so uh, I, I'll add quite a bit. I'm in the same boat, I quite like cilantro. <laughs> There's people who really hate it, so. <laughs> I'm one of those people that, that find it soapy. And uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so I usually like what, what I find a bit more like le less intense is like coriander seed. And sometimes oh. I'll, I'll just add a little bit of that crushed up. And like, that's a bit more, uh, it's a little like less intense for, for me, but yeah, I'm one of those soapy people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would pass on the cilantro too. Um, uh, can, I, can I say something? I think um, my chili, my chili is done. Uh, the chili is done. But uh, my phone, my phone's almost dead again. And uh, a little bit early. But um, uh, so I'll look at it and uh, I'll I'll send to the the page or whatever. Awesome! Thanks so much for joining us. Peter. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. I'm always happy to see you and your family come by. Yeah, for sure. Good to see you. Does it taste okay? Yeah, it tastes good. It tastes great. Awesome. Don't forget to take a picture and uh, tag us on our social medias or even send it to any of the staff you work with. Um, okay. I'm gonna, before you leave, I'm just going to throw up uh, the social media here. It's right there. It's Twitter. Our Twitter is FNFAOMB. Our Facebook yeah, is... Oh, what's uh, up? I, I deleted I deleted my Facebook, so I'm just uh, I'm I'm just on Twitter Daddy, now. That one, no, oh, no, worries, no worries, no worries. If that's the case, um, for sure, just uh, pass it on to anybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to showing off our our social media cards. <laughs> oh, they disappeared on me. Yeah. Either way, just make sure you show us your Instagram-worthy photos. Um, our Instagram is FNFAO and our Facebook is Facebook, I mean, uh, our Facebook is First Nations Family Advocate. And awesome. And our, use our hashtag, food as medicine. And is this the part that I could taste? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to bring this over here and clear off the space for you. We're just pretty much about done here. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. Just so. We have all the ingredients in. Sometimes what you might um do is is cook it for a little bit longer um i usually cook mine for like about 40 minutes because the fibers really blend together but if you you know or you just reheat heat it the next day and it's good because a lot of times you, you'll have leftover chili so mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah it looks wonderful is this for me to taste yeah let's see what david thinks oh my god you know what i didn't do Ooh, what's that? Jeez. <laughs> I put all the ingredients in and I put salt and pepper in um, when I when I finished near finished cooking the ground beef. But I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Do you want me to throw this in there too? So throw that in there so it gets that nice flavor in. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and if you can't see, she's throwing in quite a bit. And again, that's just the flavor and taste. Mm, it's so good. It's delicious. Oof, I'm jealous. Can't wait to taste it. Yummy. I keep stealing bites. <laughs>
<laughs> yep. That looks terrific. Yum. Lovely. All right. And here's the moment of truth where I get to taste them. I'm going to take it off momentarily. I just want to be clear on that. Please stay safe. You're going to try it out. Mmm. How is it? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to. Mm, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's hot or it's good? It was very good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, those just flavors are just like flying past me. I love it. This is exactly <laughs> how I like it. <laughs> awesome. Angel are going to add chips chips and some sour cream to it. So we're excited. Looks great, Sarah. And leftover wow. chili is so good. It always like brings out the flavors more when it's leftover. Mm -hmm. I find. Chili and eggs for breakfast. Oh, that's a really good combination, chili and eggs. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> I always eat mine with buttered rye toast. That's my way to go, too. And that's how I always eat it. Yeah. Um, I have a tip, kind of. Uh, when I first made chili, I didn't have tomato paste, so I ended up using a can of tomato soup and it worked pretty good just add a bit of water to it that's, don't a good, tip. that's a good tip and the odd time well my husband thinks he's really good at making chili but um and he always makes it out of moose meat and so um he just he just throws it together and people tell him it tastes good but um he always puts a can of uh tomato sauce like hunt's tomato sauce like spaghetti sauce he puts that in i don't normally do that um but you can do that i think that it would make your chili go a long way um and i don't think there's anything wrong with that and i know my mom makes it with the tomato soup as well um my one grandma used to always put a little dash of vinegar when she was done cooking it, because she said it cut the acid. The odd time I do that, but I don't really notice a difference if I do it or not, but there might be a rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, or if that's something that you, you, you're you conscious about, that's usually something, a good tip for you. <laughs> but with that said, um, Karen, did you have anything to say before we kind of sign out for tonight? I just uh, got a text from Rachel giving me a picture of her beautiful meal with a little bit of sprinkle of cheese and a huge miigwech to Cora for sharing your recipe. And again, thanks everyone for joining us. We're on to week eight next week and we're doing ham and scallop potatoes for Easter. So hope you can join us. And miigwech Cora, miigwech David and Chris as well. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Yeah, thanks so much, thank everybody. You so much. I, I really enjoyed being with you all tonight. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures a little later on. And maybe I'll be invited back one day. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. Oh, that was so good. It has to be one of your best recipes. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so and much. With that, said, uh, with that said, I'm just going to, again, plug our social medias. I'm just going to throw that there one last time. So that's Twitter is our FNFAOMB. Facebook is First Nations Family Advocate. And our Instagram is FNFAO. Um, and again, we do have lots of programs coming up. We have Live Free. We have um, Women's Wellness. We have uh, Sharing Circles uh, for both men and women. Um, traditional parenting. Traditional, yeah, traditional parenting, as well as uh, beating as medicine. So if you have any interest in that, please contact our office and they'll get in contact. They'll bring, they'll pass you over to the right people. <laughs> I, I, just to, I just want to add one more thing. Um, we know that not everyone uh, has uh, a worker at our office. Uh, we have people that have jumped in from social media. So thanks for joining us. Um, you can email your pictures to fnfao at manitobachiefs.com. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks so much. Take care. See ya. Bye. Good night.